But uh, once that bird left and once that energy was gone, I quickly had my regular energy back and I was able to go for lunch and, and continue with the day's meditation. And then at this point, because I know something very powerful is happening to me, uh, when I go back to meditate, I'm sort of taking it easy, you know, I'm not trying to get in deep and, and do anything too strong. I'm just sort of trying to stabilize and, you know, stay in a sta sacred state as, as best I can. And something else about this meditation process you should know is that after the first three days of concentrating and doing this concentration meditation, what they tell you is that on day four, which today was day four that I'm talking about, um, you start to have trauma be released. And how that feels for most of us is it feels like pain in your back and, and you'll get back pain on this side and back pain on that side and you'll think it's muscle pain. But really what's happening is it's trauma that's coming up from your life that is releasing. And even though I had done a style of Vipassana meditation in the past on my own, meditating an hour at a time, two hours at a time, I never knew that it had this potential for releasing trauma. And I was even a little bit skeptical, like, would it really release trauma? But what happened was exactly what they said would happen and that I would feel different pains moving during the day from, from place to place, mostly in my back. And of course, in my legs too, because I'm, I'm sitting cross-legged and I've got a lot of pain happening in my legs because of holding that position. But then at night, I'm, when I'm dreaming, I'm having very deep and vivid dreams related to things like toilet training. Like I'm remembering having a diarrhea accident on the toilet and apologizing for it, you know, like I was a little kid, you know, and when I woke up, I was like, wow, this, this technique really gets at some deep, deep trauma because this was something I've never dreamed of, you know. It just seemed like such a buried thing. And, and now I was leaving, which, which I felt good about, you know. So that was day four, this big love coming through and then releasing this trauma, you know. Day five, I thought, you know, maybe I'll just go back and meditate normally. Uh, the idea that this was a Kundalini awakening didn't really hit me yet. Um, but I went back to day five and, and meditated for two hours. And then after breakfast, boom, my energy went down again. And, and I had to go and go back to bed. I couldn't meditate. Um, and this time, I figured out a mystery that had been bothering me, which was I had seen time and time again when people go into psychosis, often they start to hyperventilate, and I didn't know why. And, and I knew that it was releasing trauma, but I, I didn't know why. And I would be laying there feeling really dead, and then just as I was half asleep, my heart started to accelerate. Boom, 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 boom. Out of nowhere, it just started accelerating. And then with that heart acceleration, zoom, another energy left. I don't know what the energy is related to, but it left. And then as soon as it did, the heart settled down again. And shortly afterwards, I was able to recover and go back to meditating. I think on day five, I skipped lunch because of the weakness. But then in the afternoon, I was back meditating. Um, day five at night, more kind of crazy traumatic dreams, you know, involving my mother and stuff, you know, this kind of thing. And also a lot of twisting and turning started to happen with me too at night while I was sleeping. I was really having to stretch and move around, you know, this, this kind of thing. Uh, day six was more of the same. Um, I thought I could meditate, couldn't, uh, stayed in bed, missed lunch. And on this day, again, I had another one of these heart acceleration experiences. Boom, 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 boom. And then, boom, the energy goes. Uh, but in the afternoon on day six, um, as I'm meditating, I'm noticing that the pains are starting to shift. And instead of feeling pain in my back, I'm feeling hot knives and, and real heat come in between my, my lumbars, you know, and, and just in the back, there's just pain, fiery pain, fiery pain. But it felt more comfortable and it felt like it was getting at a deeper level. So, you know, I really felt like I was making progress, not only with the, the Kundalini awakening stuff, but with the trauma releasing that was, that was supposed to be happening. And by the end of that day, the day six, um, my back started to feel really good and it didn't feel like there was much trauma left. I, all the pain was gone. And I started to think, well, what happens next? And uh, just about that time, I started to get a lot of activity in my sacrum which is the bones right at the bottom of your spine. And then a real burning in my cossacks. 
And when my Cossack started burning for the first time in my life, now the Cossack is that tailbone, right? Your tailbone. When that Cossack started burning, I knew right away, oh my God, this is the real Kundalini we're getting into now. And I was pretty nervous because I didn't have any help. And I knew from reading that some people, when they have Kundalini awakenings, they can have mental problems. They can have serious pains in their neck and things. That, that this energy is extremely powerful and you need to be very careful in how you deal with it. Um, if you can deal with it at all. So I, I was kind of nervous and I went and told the teacher what I was worried about. And again, no help. Uh, so I just went to bed and relaxed and was having more dreams of traumas and specifically my relationships with women over the years, you know. Uh, and then day eight, when I woke up, I felt immediately heavy. Um, and normally what happens with Kundalini is they say it's supposed to move up your spine. And if you remember the beginning, I said I had this pleasurable feeling coming up my spine. But in this situation, I felt this heavy energy in my stomach. And it felt heavier than anything else. It was like the worst day, for sure. And uh, I don't even think I got up to meditate at all that day. Because I had been getting up 4.30 to 6.30 every day. But this day, I, I don't think I got up at all. So, I guess after about two and a half hours of laying in bed, feeling like, when is this going to end? Then the heat, the, that big heat energy started to rise. And... Um, as it rose, it came up quite quickly, and then it, boom, it just left this explosion that went right through my brain. Uh, very specific and different than the first one. The first one was a body explosion. This one was a head explosion. But there's one other piece, which is that as the energy moved and it came up into my head, I had this vision or a hallucination of a black coral snake leaving my mouth. And the minute the tail of that black coral snake left my mouth, and I could almost feel it, the minute the tail left, I felt immediately better and back to normal. Back to somewhat normal, like with all this happening. Um, and it felt like, okay, now I'm done. Like, I've had the kundalini come out and, and I'm done. Meanwhile, when, when I go back to meditate, and this had been happening for a few days as well, um, there is something else that's happening that I haven't mentioned, and that is that... As I'm breathing, ever since that vibrational energy left me the first time, every time I was breathing in, it felt very pleasurable and almost orgasmic in its feeling, almost like a sexual pleasure, going into my lungs and, and into my stomach and my nostrils and even just breathing into your nose. It was this overwhelming pleasure, maybe like when you're tickled and it feels good but you can't take it. It was kind of like that. Um, and I was wondering how I was going to be able to function in a normal life if every breath I take is almost unbearably pleasurable. And I was assuming this was going to be sort of a permanent thing I'd have to get used to, and, and I couldn't see how I was going to get used to that. But uh, that was solved on day eight. I think that was the most unexpected and strangest day of all. Day eight, I'm laying in bed at a relaxation time. I'm not stopped. I, I'm on my regular meditations now, and I'm just taking a break. And then all of a sudden I feel this beam come from the outside and it just sort of hits me here and then it starts to go down my whole body and just sort of starts to scan me or, or something. It feels like it's going into my body, down all the way through my body and into my legs. And then I turned around just to lay on my stomach spontaneously and it went over my caustics and my sacrum area as well. And that's it. It didn't touch the rest of my spine, just the caustics and the sacrum. And uh, I, it felt so conscious, it was almost as if, it was as if there was a spirit watching me, doing this to me specifically. It felt that intimate, you know, almost like a doctor was working on you or something. And, uh, you know, I just took it, rolled with it. And uh, as strange as this sounds, uh, once I was finished and, and that happened, I felt completely, you know, back to normal. I felt grounded again. And all of that orgasmic feeling, that high feeling, went away. And I felt quite, you know, with my feet on the floor. And uh, I went back to meditating. And, and that was really the end, the end of the Kundalini. And that was it.